artists, my name is Candy Waterloo and I'm Curator of Education at the Chazen Museum of Art. The museum is thrilled to be able to bring art and art making supplies into your homes, which we could not have done without the support of our partners at 100 Black Men. Each kit was thoughtfully created with you in mind and includes enough materials to make several versions of each project, as well as some items you might find handy in your back to school list, such as markers and glue sticks. We cannot wait for you to begin creating and learning with these kits and have a couple of tricks and techniques to share along the way. Are you ready to start learning? Let's go. The artist Willie Bester, seen here in his home, was born in South Africa in 1956. He began making art as a child and would create toy cars from wire, old candles, and tin cans. He had an interest in painting and was encouraged by his teachers to continue making art. Today, he is an artist of many talents, creating paintings, sculptures, and collages. Here, the artist sits in a room in his home. Many of the elements surrounding him and some parts of his home were created by him and built entirely with his own hands using repurposed and recycled materials. Bester grew up in South Africa during apartheid. Apartheid is similar to the racial segregation of the United States. During apartheid, people were legally separated based on their race and forced to live and work in separate areas. As we see from the signs here, there were entrances and parts of the cities that were designated for whites only or non-whites only. After a long fight for equality by the people of South Africa, apartheid finally ended in 1994. Although Bester uses his art to highlight the injustices of his people, he also seeks to embrace the beauty in the communities around him. Through the use of vibrant colors, photographs, and sometimes garbage, he hopes to show that despite having little or nothing, beauty can still be created, which is the true spirit of his community. Willie Bester created this collage in 1997. Titled Untitled Township Scene, he used a variety of materials to make this, including oil paint, newspaper, rags, cardboard, photographs, and more. What do you think is going on in this work of art? What do you see that makes you say that? As you continue looking at this work of art, ask yourself some questions. How many people are in this picture? What are the people doing? What else do you see? Do you recognize any objects or text that is familiar to you? How would you describe the colors? What time of day is it? If you were standing here, what might you hear? What might you smell? As you continue to look at this picture, allow your eyes to move up, down, back, forth, and from corner to corner to take in every detail. Now that you've spent some time looking at this artwork, it's time for you to go into your own neighborhood and make some observations. Take a look around and start to notice what you see. Who do you see? What are they doing? What colors do you notice? How would you describe these colors? What sounds do you hear? How does it feel when you walk through your neighborhood? What else can you find? What else do you see? Record it all down on a piece of paper or in your memory. Now that you've learned a little bit about Willie Bester's artwork, I'm gonna give you some tricks and tips using some of the materials in your kit as you make your own collage. Your kit has two types of white paper. One of the white papers is thin, one is a bit thicker. You want to find the thicker white piece of paper, which is watercolor paper, like I have here. Some of the other things that you will need in your kit are these pattern colored papers. You will also need your glue stick, so make sure you have a glue stick handy. You will need these, which are oil pastels, and I'm gonna show you in a minute how to use these. And then you need these tiny little pieces of paper. This is tissue paper, but it's a special kind of tissue paper called bleeding tissue paper. And last but not least, you will need scissors or a way to cut. So I have actually started a collage here on this side, and I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about some of the things I've started to do. So. You will notice that on my paper, I started to cut out some of the individual elements. Just because your paper is a square like this doesn't mean it has to stay that way. So feel free to experiment, cut out different shapes. You can use them later and incorporate them another way. I've incorporated some newspapers. 
So Willie Bester uses newspapers a lot. There are no rules when it comes to collage. You can incorporate any kind of paper materials you want. Napkins, newspapers, a piece of clothing, anything you want can go on this piece. The other thing that I wanted to show you is that when you're making a collage, collages have depth, which means that even though they're flat, there's depth on the surface. So if I look at this picture, I can see that this green stem is the closest to me, this blue shell is in the middle, and this dog is in the background. And that happens from how I overlap all of my pieces, okay? And this is all just glue and cutting. I recommend before you even start to glue things down, you take all of your parts and pieces and play around with them like a puzzle before you decide where you want them to go. Now, I'm gonna show you how to use pastels and the bleeding tissue paper. I just remembered that I forgot to tell you two more things from your kit that you're going to need, which is your paintbrush, and then you'll need some kind of container for water. Now, I'm gonna show you how to use your oil pastels and this really cool stuff called bleeding tissue paper. So, with my oil pastel, I'm just going to draw. Now, I'm using white here, and I'm gonna show you something super cool in a moment. So I am just drawing, you know, some symbols on my piece of um, white paper. Okay, now here's where the really cool part happens. I'm gonna take my piece of bleeding tissue and put it right on top of my oil pastel. I'm gonna take my paintbrush and my water and I'm going to paint right on top, okay? Now as I do that, you might see something really cool happening here. And what you're starting to notice is how the red from my tissue paper is starting to carry over onto my page, okay? Now I'm gonna leave that here for a minute and I'm gonna move on to the next part. So I'm gonna take another piece of bleeding tissue and I'm just painting right on top of it. You can use your fingers if you like. Now you could pull these pieces off right away or you could let them hang out. It's very tempting to want to glue these down Unfortunately, these won't stick with glue, okay? Now the reason why this is called bleeding tissue paper is because the pigment or the color of the paper actually moves off of the page and sticks to our paper. So I'm gonna show you what I mean here. I'm gonna peel up this piece of bleeding tissue, peel up this piece, and what you should start to see is that my oil pastel is starting to appear, okay? So I'm actually gonna blend my colors and I'm gonna go over this one more time and really, really um, get all of this pigment in there, okay? If this happens where you feel like the tissue isn't working as well as you'd like, you probably didn't use enough water. So this material is very forgiving and you can just go right back over the top and add some extra water, okay? So I'm gonna take this and let's see if this one worked a little bit more to my liking. Boom, check it out. You can see all of my white oil pastel. Now, when you, if you think you're done with this and it's still a little bit wet, I'm gonna show you something else you can do. You can use this bleeding tissue to draw. You could use it on top of your newspaper. So I'm gonna use it here to get some color over my letters. What you wanna do as you're using this though, is when you're finished, make sure that you're throwing these in a place away from any of the bleeding tissue that you haven't used. And I'm just gonna give this time to dry, but there you have it. A mixed media collage inspired by Willie Bester. Now that you've seen a couple of examples of art in the Chazen Museum of Arts collection, I invite you to come to the museum and see these works of art in person. The museum is always free, but right now our, our hours are a bit limited. When you get to the museum, stop by our desk and ask a friendly visitor services associate to help you find the two works of art you learned about here today. Until we can be together in person, we wish you continued inspiration, creativity, and joy. Bye. To learn more about the Chazen Museum of Art, visit our website at www.chazen.wisp.edu and plan your visit today.